Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Nikita Cherka. Welcome to NVC Reports. On December 7th, I've spoken to Miriam Martinez, who is the first Latino Republican woman to run for Texas governor. Everything from her controversial position on immigration, legalization of marijuana and gambling, to education and her personal life. Thank you for tuning in to NVC Reports exclusive interview. Enjoy. First question that I have for you, um, which is this, um, I'm an immigrant myself, and um, I, I understand the importance of using experience as your aid um, to guiding you to truth. Um, and even our founding fathers, uh, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, famously wrote in Federalist Number 20 that experience is the oracle of truth. So my question is simple. Um, how would you use your experience, and what exactly is your experience what, as an immigrant to um, um, that will help you um, in office? Well, my story is based on a cruel reality of abuse, discrimination, and uh, the need of knowledge uh, for justice. Right. It, how interesting it is that everything falls into play. Um, and when I was in the trenches, growing up, working, um, suffering, uh, seeing life as it is, I, I always decided to be passionate and walk the line of justice. So as I grew older, I realized that I needed to fight harder because growing up in poverty, you don't have the education or the knowledge. So basically, I, I molded myself. I adapted myself. I knew what was right, what was wrong, and grew in a business environment since I was 13, 14 years old. And work and studied at the same time, juggled several jobs to help out my family. And my family is from Mexico. Uh, but living in the border, this is interesting because immigrants that 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 uh, live in the border can go to the United States and then go to Mexico whenever they, they desire. But basically, the passion for justice, truth, and transparency led me to participate in the political life. Good. And that was going to be my next question. Was there an inspirational figure um, that brought you into politics, something that deeply inspired you, um, besides justice? or My mother. Your mother? My mother was an orphan. Uh -huh. She didn't have anybody. <laughs> and uh, she pretty much is an extraordinary woman. She had nine children. She never, ever took anything for granted. Uh -huh. She always felt like an outsider because she lived with my great-grandmother. And that gave her the strength to be determined to to determine what she needed to do to survive. She never ever told me that I couldn't do anything. She says, "Look, all you have to do is get the opportunity, work hard, be honest, and don't look back, and learn from your mistakes." And till this day, she she never pushed me in a negative. It was always positive, and I think that she is. She is the main inspiration of the way I am. Because if you see her, she's a, she works night and day. She's 75 years old, and she would she she did work as an illegal in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, and then send the money to Mexico to help my father. My father would take care of nine kids. So then Ronald Reagan created a program, and I remember her joy in that. Okay, now we can uh, get our documents in order. And become residents and your citizens and that's how she made it happen. Wow, interesting. Um, what made you decide to switch? I'm very blunt. Corruption mm -hmm. on the border, the numbers are right there. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to point any fingers, but right. it's an area that we need to protect the border, not corrupt the border. So um, being in the trenches, seeing firsthand the abuse of power and how organically they grow their own. Right. And I wasn't going to lend myself to follow those guidelines. Abortion was a big topic, and I'm, I'm pro life. Right. And there was already arrangements where I was going to be state representative. Without even winning, they already knew that I was going to win. Mm -hmm. And the money was there, everything was there. And I felt uh, horrible. So I decided not to go that route, and that's why I didn't want to kiss the ring and follow everybody like 
follow the corruption, the sea of corruption that's that's there. So with the Republican Party, it was it was beautiful. I was absolutely breathtaking to see that the will of the people is respected. That's why I decided to go. Now, suppose I'm running against you, and I resort to negative campaign, and I say something like, "Oh, um, look at um, the history with the Democratic Party. Uh, what if um, the candidate I'm running against is only running um, because she knows that if she's a Democrat, she has little chances of winning?" Um, how would you respond to that? What would be your major rebuttal against an attack like that, if it were ever to come? Oh no, those attacks have come. Right. <laughs> well, um, when there's no way of, of convincing somebody if they already have that seed planted, mm -hmm. uh, my efforts and what I've done speak for themselves. Because once you reject a position that they're already giving it, giving it to, to you, and you say, "I'm not for injustice, I'm for justice," that action by itself speaks louder than than words. And it's always nice to tell people that how to express myself with sincerity, with transparency. I see it as a positive, um, but there's always going to be naysayers. So I try to be very patient and let them be aware that I'm a woman of character, dignity, and transparency. So I guess let's get to policy. What will you do for Texas as a governor, and uh, what are your major policy positions? There's three. The state immigration reform, as you know, immigration is a broken down system. Mm -hmm. Having experience in media for 26 years and dealing with immigration for 41 years, I think the plan that I have suits the bill where the state benefits from getting new taxpayers, a program that we get people out of the shadows, we can offer a work permit, and since the state created the federal government, the federal government did not create the states. Every state has their constitution, which I respect the constitution of Texas and the constitution of the United States, and based on the 10th amendment where we create our own laws. Right. Uh, that's where the plan fits and caters to the 15 million undocumented that live in the state of Texas. They say it's 13, but that they said that last year, so the numbers that have increased to the state, and I, I calculate it's about 15 million, and uh, we would have 15 million new taxpayers. We need to see this as a positive and not a negative. Uh, that's number one. Number two, on uh, my platform, legalize medicinal marijuana and decriminalize one ounce or less. Uh, my sister had cancer, and the suffering that she went through was horrible. She, she died. It was just very painful to see. And doctors recommended medicinal marijuana for her and for other patients. So it's a, it's a very sensitive issue, but it's something that needs to be addressed. And once again, we can benefit from helping people that are that are suffering, and we can also see it as a positive for our state in agriculture, in, in other areas, and decriminalizing marijuana one ounce or less. Parents have talked to me and said that their children from nine to sixteen are now legal as criminals. Therefore, it is important to address the matter. Listen to the parents, help out the children, and it would it would eliminate these cases that clutter the system. Um, the police force police force would have more time to deal with serious crimes. It would be a win-win situation for everybody. And the third one, um, I would love to allow the voters to decide on uh, legalizing gaming. We, the veterans. <laughs> really have spoke loud and clear, and they've asked me time and time again, why is the state of Texas so negative in legalizing gaming? They want to vote on it. And I talked to members that own their Indian tribe territory, and it's allowed for them to have casinos in, in, in their lands. So I decided to look into it and to allow the, the voter to decide if they want this in the state of Texas, it would create employment, but it, it is a very serious topic that we need to measure it adequately, because there's a lot of things that that would be so controversial. Even mentioning mentioning uh, gaming in the state of Texas uh, causes 
on one side excitement and another side concern because of the responsibilities. But we've never done it. We can do a pilot program or we can decide to seek an area of the state of Texas and then see how, how it goes without spending a lot of money. I forgot to mention that the state immigration reform that I plan doesn't need any tax dollars. It would be self-funded. So that would help a lot the, the state. Could you explain a little more about that? So is this a, sort of an amnesty plan? No. Or, no? Okay. no, no, no. Pathway to citizenship? Or how, how would it work? Well, there are several things that that needs to be taken into consideration. It's not a one-size-fits-all issue. Mm -hmm. Let's say that your mother is an American citizen and your father is not, and your sisters and brothers are American citizens. Mm -hmm. the, this type of pattern presents itself all over the state of Texas, all over the nation. And for one reason or another, the visas or the documents, even though your parent is allowed to become a U.S. citizen because you have uh, met family members that are, uh, you cannot compare it with amnesty, you cannot compare it with a, a, a path to citizenship. It is an immigration platform where by law you deserve just to have your legal status. Mm -hmm. uh, Even if you're illegal. Uh, when you're illegal and you've been here all your life, and you, well, yeah, this program is for the illegals. This program is not for U.S. citizens because they don't need it. Or this program is for those that have been living in the United States for all their lives. And, of course, they're going to get a status. And it's a very meticulous process, but it's simple at the same time. You get a background check. Um, one of the concerns th that everybody has is the programs Medicare, CHIP, or the food stamp programs, if you decide to participate in the state immigration reform plan, you have to decline to be a part of those programs. Um, you start establishing yourself as a, as a citizen that contributes, that works, that doesn't have a, a, a negative background. Or, I have to be very fair, because let's say 10 years ago you committed a crime, and it was it was a, it wasn't a, a crime that you deserved the death penalty. And now you have your family, you have a, a lifestyle, you don't know anything but the United States as your, as, your, as your home, then you still qualify to have the status. The importance here is to get everybody out of the shadows. Mm -hmm. We cannot start this blame game with the federal government and with the state at a state level when we have a scenario and we need a solution. Right. Well, I suppose what I always found unfair when it comes to the question of immigration is why the politicians spend so much time on the problem of bringing people out of the shadows when we have doctors who are getting their visas denied and nurses who are coming in, but the government's not letting them go. And these are the people that actually, you know, they respect the American law and um, they go in and they apply for documents. So I guess, I mean, my question is where is, where is the, the, the program that would um, help out legal immigrants that are here that actually respect the law? And I know you can't do much about it because this is a federal issue, but at the same time, still it feels, seems a little unfair. Well, I think this program, uh, once they see the positives of it, other states will adopt it. We have to start somewhere where it's an equal, it's, it's, it's an equal and equal playing field, and we avoid the evilness or the darkness of avoiding uh, a procedure like this. And I think it's it's a phenomenal project. I am getting in touch with uh, members of Abilene Christian University mm -hmm. and Apple because I want it to be high tech. And I'm not going to invent the black thread. <laughs> so it's very important for me to be clear and have this program ready to go. So I'm developing it as we speak. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it will be accepted. And it's going to be, it's not going to cost the state anything. It's so funny. Well, good. I hope so. I just, I just feel that sometimes legal immigrants get overlooked in this whole situation. Well, that's where everybody gets uh, the attention that they deserve respectfully. You're not discriminating. You're treating everybody uh, with a plan, right. and that way everybody can adapt. Right. Because when we start separating, that's where we get into problems. Um, education. Mm -hmm. What would you do as a governor when it comes to education? The teachers need better salaries and. We need to elevate the education system. Um, I got in contact with a group of leaders 